take it slow Got that fire roar Wheels of fury tear the track Hear that engine soar Me back, shifting gears Push it to the core Kill a Kyle on my tail Feel the tension roar Ain't no rules in this game Every breath I fight Now the pedal scream for speed Through the endless night And welcome to the first installment of Wheels of Fury Look Back at You Series 1991. When we look at WCW Japan Super Show. Hell yeah. That took place at the famous Tokyo Dome in Tokyo, Australia. Yes. That was a fucking show. Yeah, it certainly was. Now, WCW and New Japan did do quite a few shows in Japan. Oh, yeah. I mean, then this is the first of, I want to say, three. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say three. I know they did one in 1995 in Korea, which yeah. is the one I thought about yeah. before I looked into this, but this was a good show. I thought that oh, the Tokyo Dome, it was called the Egg Dome. Yeah. As well, but what a huge, like... Oh, yeah, it's a huge, huge venue. Like, and every year, they have Wrestle Kingdom there. And they have a pretty good attendance. Yeah, I can hold a large, large crowd. Like they said, there was, like, 65,000 people there, which is quite a lot of people. I mean... Wherever WWE's got for WrestleMania, sixty to eighty thousand people is about an average for the attendance there. But I mean, like for a country like Japan, and like they have arenas, but like I've said this before, the Tokyo Dome is the Madison Square Garden of Japan. Madison Square Garden, you know, the world's most famous arena in the United States and all around the world. Well, the Tokyo Dome is just as popular. Oh, God, yeah. Now, I mean, the Tokyo Dome could hold twice as many people as Madison Square Garden. It's, but, like, the Tokyo Dome is one of the most famous arenas in the world. Yes. Oh, yeah. When you look at the legendary, like, Kyle said, Wrestle Kingdom, you have and the promotions of the 80s and 90s, yeah. WCW, WWF, you know, all Japan, mm -hmm. it's like, one of the best arenas out there, oh, yeah. or if you want to say arenas or whatever, but one of the best venues, I guess, in yeah. the world, and oh, yeah. how do we talked about it years ago when we did our top whatever it was arenas stadiums halls yeah, yeah. you know just kind of what a good show this was in May of 91 yes and in this series specifically the next pay-per-view we talk about we'll get to but you'll see Ric Flair in at least two of these Yes. So, anyways, now we will talk about the dark matches, but we'll talk about them at the end. But, anyways, let's get it going. So, why don't we just go over what we saw first, and then we'll go over the rest. So, we start things off with a six-man tag match. We had Shiro Kusanaka. Kunaki Kobayashi and Taka Yuki 
Yeah. Okay, Yuka. Is Yuka? Yeah. Fuck on. Kim. Horner? Yeah. Brian Pillman. And. Tom Sank. Yeah. Z Man. What a team. I mean, this was a very good match. And you look at Brian in his prime. I mean, they fucking called him Flying Brian for a reason. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And you look at this guy who, if the accident didn't happen, he could have gone a lot further than he did. Yeah. You know, I mean, his work in WCW was just phenomenal. Yes. And so, I mean, this was a good match, too. Yeah, I mean, these guys really pulled it off. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you had, uh... Kushinaka, Kobayashi, and... Izuka pick up the win on this one. Yeah. Then we go on to a match for the, the IWGP Junior Heavyweight title as... Juicy Thunder Liger took on... Akura Nogami. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And I mean, when you look at the junior IWGP title, yes. It's obviously a lot smaller than the junior championship in the U.S. Right, yeah. And, yeah. And I mean, Akira, like, what a presence. Oh, yeah. Talk about the presence, like, we all know of the lure, the presence, the aura around a guy that we'll get to later in this show. But yeah, Akira had his own unique aura. Yeah. And Juice and Liger got the win on this one with the. Well, sort of. Talk about DDT. Yes, eh? Hey. Super <laughs> DDT, if you will. And again, back in those days, that's what it took to get a match. Yeah. A DDT, a simple suplex. Yeah. You know. I mean, honestly, it was much later in the 90s where it was just another like signature move or whatever now the thing is usually you don't see DDTs off the ropes like that no usually it would be like you know a standing DDT or you know Randy Orton with like the draping DDT or John Moxley with the, you know, uh, Death Rider, or the, uh, anyways, yeah. yeah. Or whatever. You usually don't see a DDT off the ropes like that. Which, that's what made it so different. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at Jason Thunder Liger's career. Yeah. 40 years in the business, rather. Yeah. And even wrestling mostly in WCW as well as his native Japan. Yes. So he was very familiar with this. And I mean, yeah. Yeah, if I wish he would have did more work in WWF. Yeah. But I mean, for what he did, it was, I mean, obviously he's a Hall of Famer. So that's pretty cool. Even though he only had one match with the WWE, that was, or not, that was, like, eight years ago, I think, or somewhere in there, and then Tyler Breeze. Yeah, NXT broke one. Then we go on to another tag match. You got Arn Anderson, Barry Windham, and the Four Horsemen taking on Masa Saito. Oh. Masahiro Chono. Yes. 
Vanessa Saido, obviously we know him in North America in the Orient Express. Yes. And yeah, obviously this was a very good match because we all know how good the four horsemen were. Yeah. And I mean these two guys as well really worked as a good take team. And I think it's obvious that I wish we could have got more from Murray. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he did a lot of good matches in WCW, WWF. I think that's probably it. Well, there's probably more than that, but... Yeah. And, again, if it weren't for the injury, he could have gone a lot further than he did. Yeah. In fact, I don't know if he ever had a singles title, and I could be wrong on I think he held the calendar title. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then, of course, Barry Wyndham, the famous Wyndham Motunga family. Yes. I think that these two guys are in one of the best stables of this time. Oh, yeah. And so, and then we'll see another horseman member later on, but yeah. Arn and Barry won. Yes. With a sneaky clothesline by Barry. Oh, yeah. Behind the referee's back, potentially. Then we're going to another tag team match. Well, this is for the WCW World Tag Titles and the IWGP Tag Titles. As the Steiner Brothers, I mean the Steiner Bros, took on Hiroshi Hase and Suki Sasaki. Yes, sir. Yeah, and you look at the Steiner brothers and their stellar wrestling career. I mean, these oh, guys, yeah. WCW, WWF, Japan. I'm sure I'm missing other, well, AWA. AWA, yeah. You know, the amount of take team championships that these guys have. I mean, <laughs> you look at these guys as one of the best take teams, it would be interesting to see what they could pull off if they could still wrestle, if oh, they yeah. were still wrestling today. Yeah. You know, it's like one of Again, imagine, and I know Scott later on had a singles career yeah. where he was world champion. I'm not quite sure if Rick ever held. I think he was the U.S. champion. I think so, yeah. So, yeah, again, and you look at the other team, I don't know too much about them. Yeah. But in any case, they tried to do the... Bulldog off the top rope. Yeah. Know, but the Steiners obviously reversed and perfected that. Uh, and yeah. Picked up the win. Well, actually, Scott did the Frankensteiner. Yeah. Because they Steiner were flying it. Yeah. But yeah. Pulling off the Frankensteiner for the win. Yes. Becoming the still WCW Take Team Champions. And the new IWGP Tag Team Champions. Yeah. And yeah, this was probably the match of the night. Well, I guess. Yeah, I could say that. Yeah, even though both Rick and Scott are, you could say, retired now, we do have currently Scott's nephew, Rick's son, yes. Ron Breaker, wrestling right now. Yeah, and I think that a soon-to-be WWE or Universal Champion, or wait, sorry, World Champion. Yeah, we're, we're long past Universal title. I mean, it's quite possible. He is the Intercontinental Champion again. Oh yeah, that's right as well. Yes. Then we want to, as he got to we took on Big Cat Hughes. Yeah. An interesting fact, and 
obviously didn't pull this, but he was quite a straight edge person. I like Andre, yeah. Like, no alcohol, I'm assuming no tobacco. But here's a guy who basically was one of the best uh, in his country of Argentina. Yeah. Basketball player. Basketball player, yeah. And you look at Jorge Gonzalez's career as a, a good transition to the professional wrestling world. Yes. One of the few athletes that made his way into professional wrestling, although besides Kevin Nash, I don't think there was many basketball players at the time that oh. transitioned into that world, but... Yeah, you look at this guy, had a stellar career in WCW, and as he was in this match, they call him the Argentinian Giant. Yes. And I just keep thinking, if he, if he was still alive today, to have a match with him and the Nigerian Giant. Yeah, exactly. That would have been fucking amazing. Yeah, it would be. But this was a pretty good match. And again, the guy that size that can move like a luchador. Oh yeah, like seven foot seven and you know, <laughs> can move like a cruiserweight. But I think that is a tribute to his basketball background. Yeah. He's very, very athletic. Better to watch you were over here. Oh yeah. This grudge match between the Great Buddha and Sting. Yeah. That was a good match. I think they faced each other again down the road. Oh, they faced each other multiple, 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 multiple times. Right. This was interesting. I mean, obviously, Muda used the mist. Yeah. More than once. Well, he. During his entrance, you spread the mist yeah. into the air. And yeah, at some point he would use the mist on his opponent during the match. <laughs> Sting was going for the Stinger Splash and moved a mist in him and then got the pain of ball. Yep. A controversial win. I mean, he got Sting backstage with the green mist on his face and he was challenging Muda to a match in America. So, yeah. I think we're talking about the best in Japan and in America and all around the world. Badge of honor and whatnot, but that wasn't very honorable and whatnot. But it doesn't matter whether it's Japan or U.S., Muda, I want a rematch with you. Yeah. If KG Muda was still wrestling, I mean, he retired long since. Oh, yeah. But he could still go. I mean, he is still built. Oh, yeah, he's still in really good shape. But, yeah, this was an interesting match if I want for the finish. Yeah. Speaking of controversial finishes, I'm going to watch you another title versus title match. For the FWA World Title and the IWGP World Title, <laughs> as the IWGP Champion, the Dragon, Tatsui Fujinami, took on the NWA World Champion, the Nature Boy, Ric Flair. Yes, sir. Yeah, and you know, this is interesting because you look at Ric Flair, who was the WCW champion. Not long after this, he would jump ship to WWF. Yeah. And another controversial matter, but... Yeah, exactly. This was a pretty good match. I mean, they pulled out all the stops, and... Yeah, at one point, Ric Flair getting busted open. Big shock. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah. In a shocking term of events. Who's it on? Fujinabi picked up the win. Yeah. He got uh, Bill Alfonso was the referee in this one. Refereed a couple matches on this show. Yep. And uh, he gets knocked out of the ring. And you got Fujinami back body dropping Flair over the top rope, which will be a disqualification by WCW rules. And 
Fujinami got back in the ring, worked over Flair for a bit, got him in like a, a stretch, got him in a pin. You have Tiger Hattori, I believe was the other referee's name. Yeah. That counted to three. And they're like, well, wait a minute. Flair got back, dropped over top rope. That should be a disqualification. Did Bill Alfonso see it? Tiger Atori is not the referee of record and whatnot. And then, you know, you got Jim Ross backstage in the press conference area and they show Fujinami sitting at the table talking with the press and whatever. Ric Flair comes in, he's got Barry Wendham and Iron Anson with him and goes over and snatches the title off the table. He's like, this is my belt. You didn't earn this gym gym. You didn't beat me for this gym gym. You want it? Come to America and take it from me. And I think, alrighty then. Yeah, I don't know. I think maybe the guy didn't watch WCW at this time, so I will say he was still the world champion, even though the latter guy won. Yeah, so, I think the decision probably was reversed or something. Uh, yeah. Who knows? Now we go back through where the the dark matches. Dark matches. You got an eight man tag with this is gonna be fun. Animal Hamaguchi Tango Kimura. Osamu Kido, Kido and Kantara Bushino to took on Super Strong Machine, Hiro Saido, Tatsutoshi Goto, and Norio Hanaga. 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 Sure. Hanaga. Happy Hanaga. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know any of these guys. I probably did see a match with one or two of them yeah. years ago, but... Yeah, really. Yeah. The Animal Team won. Yeah. Not Road Order Animal. <laughs> animal Hamaguchi. Anyways, then we go on to... Yeah, <laughs> Scott Norton versus The Equalizer. Yeah. Yeah, we know uh, about Scott. Yeah. Now the Equalizer. Not that familiar with. Yeah. But anyhow, Scott Norton won. Yeah, then we go on to. There's a lot of tag matches on this show. Shit. Bam Bam Bigelow. Big Bam Bigger. Crusher Bam Bam Bigelow. Taking on the Team of Doom. Ron Simmons and Butchery. Damn! <laughs> I don't know, but Teddy Long managed them at this time. I don't think so. Big Fan Fader and Bam Bam Bigelow. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Well, there was no better team in Japan. I mean, these two guys were two of the baddest motherfuckers yeah. to come out of the United States. When you look at Somebody like Stan Hansen, who bulged Vader's eye out. Yeah. And Vader, like Leon, just pushed it back in somehow. And kept going. Like, and then of course you got Bam Bam Bigel. We talk about Elegante being the seven foot tall luchador type wrestler. Bam Bam Bigelow, you look at somebody from wrestling in Japan, wrestling in WCW, ECW, WWF. Yeah. And it's like, this guy was yeah. robbed of becoming the WWF champion. Again, fuck you, Vince. These two guys were phenomenal. Oh, yeah. And it's a shame that they're both no longer with us. Yes. But 
Yes. They defeated Doom. Yes. And again, Doom, another team that was awesome in WCW. Yeah. I mean, Ron Simmons is still going. Well, no. He's not, okay. He's not wrestling, but he's still laugh. He's still, like, he'll do meet and greets and stuff like that. Yeah. And then, you know, we also lost a tree yeah. a few years ago. I'm sure this was a good match. I mean, two of these tag teams, oh my god. Yeah, exactly. And finally, for the greatest 18 club championship, we had Ricky Joshu take on Tiger Jeet Singh. Jeez. Yeah. Ricky Joshu, there's a guy that I wish we would have saw here. But what a legend in New Japan. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, like, probably all Japan. And this guy probably. was one of the best wrestlers in Japan, period. Oh, yeah. And Takujit Singh, uh, he also one of the best wrestlers. I mean, not quite sure where he wrestled. Yeah. I heard the name, I know that. But this probably, I'm sure, was a good match. Yeah. Ricky Choshu got the win of this one. Yeah. And, yeah, you know, it's funny because I wish they would have had the dark matches shown here in a way, but... Yeah. It's all good, obviously. I think that this was a really good show. And, you know, you look at, like, shows outside of... North America at this time and they can do more that they do when they're in North America. Oh yeah. I mean I've seen many matches in New Japan or all Japan. Yeah. And you watch guys like Hogan or Goldberg or even the Steiner brothers. Yeah. And they can pull out more moves than they do when they're States. Yeah. But this was a really good show. And I'm actually glad that we got to watch it. Yeah, like, we found it on Daily Motion, and it was a little bit of a pain in the ass, but we got through it. One thing that I will agree with Matt on, though, is like, okay, it was in two parts. First half of the matches we talked about, then the second part was the wrestling part. They could have had a third part, like, at the beginning, like, could have one part be, you know, the dark matches, then part two be the start of the show, and the third part be the rest of the card throughout the show. Yeah. But, nonetheless. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I think that you look at these two guys, and Jim Ross and Tony Schiavone, and they're still going today. Yeah. Now, Tony Giovanni is doing commentary a little more regularly. They only bring in JR for like big matches, I guess, if you will. They're both over in AEW right now. Yeah. Still going to this day. And not to mention the fact that, you know, they both have commentary here and they did commentary for a little while. Yeah. But then Tony Zavoni stayed in WCW and when Jim went over to WWF. He started there in ninety three. Yeah. And they went that course, if you will, for you know, many years of course. WCW he closed his doors in mm. two thousand one. WWF, WWE kept going. And then you know, after WCW closed down, Tony Zavani would do other things. I'd heard for a little while he was a Starbucks barista. You know, worked at a Starbucks and then, you know, JR doing commentary for WWE at WWE for many, many years. And then he essentially retired. And then it didn't seem like he stayed retired for very long and he's showing up in AEW with Giovanni and 
no best caliber and whatnot. Wow, it's that bad for you. Yeah. And I'd love to go to that one. <laughs> That's mad! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really, eh? Yeah, I know I said Bam Bam Bigelow should have had the WWF title, but I also think, you know, when I've heard that uh, Vader was the champion, he should have been WWE champion. Right. However, he did get a lot more titles in all the companies he was in. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, like, you look at the names on this card that are very recognized in, like, in North America and Japan. Tatsumi Fujinami, Great Muda, Ricky Choshu, Masahiro Chono, uh, Masa Saito, you know, Juice of Thunder Liger, and then if you want to go into like the American names, Sting, Ric Flair, and you know, what, what not, just very highly regarded and very well respected names in the business. And you know, we, for years, like, if you watch Great Muda's career, you know all about his aura and his presence and, and the ring and whatnot, his theatrics, if you will, and whatnot. Go back to Akira Nogami, he had his own unique aura and presence. Very, very different from Muda's, but they still had that larger than life personality, if you will. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I think there's no beggar. Like, Muda is, hands down, one of the biggest names in Japanese wrestling. I really feel like there's no bigger name in Japan than Juice Lager. No, I mean, these two guys really have done a lot in their career. Oh, yeah. You look at Muda, you look at his work in the World Wrestling Council. Yeah. You look at his work in WCW right. and elsewhere. You know, and I think Muda may or may not have had a match or two in WWF. I actually don't know that. I don't think he did. And that's kind of too bad. Yeah. But... Regardless, here's a guy that is a WWE Hall of Famer. <laughs> he did end his career on his terms. Right. And I think, you know, like I said before, he could still go if he wanted to. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I'm just kind of glad that he made that decision. Yeah. You know, but yeah. Just quickly, you know, talk of the IWGP Junior Heavyweight title, you know, that, you know, Juice and Thunder defending the title against Akira. Nobody has held that title more times than, Ju than Lager. Right. 11 times, I believe he held it. 11 yeah. or 12? I believe it was 11. Nobody's even come close to holding it that many times. No. So, this has been another episode of Wheels of Fury. Installment of Look Back at 1991. Oh, wait a second. I forgot something. Bing! This has been another episode of Wheels of Fury. And this has been the first installment of Look Back at your series 1991. Yeah. What a show. Yes. Uh, I told myself I wasn't going to swear that much anymore. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so, next week. Well, next week, we can either do another look back at a year mini or something else. Oh, when's the next pay per view? Well, I mean, the next one is all well, year, but that's not until the 23rd. Oh. Yeah. Okay. We'll play it by ear. <laughs> yeah, we'll play it by ear. But we we'll try to span things out as much as possible. Yeah. But kind of want to see if I can get the, we can get this done a 
little bit earlier yeah. so we can move on to next year. Right. Uh, but, I mean, that's... We have goals sometimes to try to... Well, who knows? So, until next time, we are your Wheels of Fury heavyweight champion. One of these terms, I'm going to... I'm not going to break mine down. In the new year, or well, New Year's Eve, this will be a year old. Uh-huh. And it's still intact. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, for me and Matt, this is Killer Kyle, and we will see you next time. Say it out. Goodbye. Never halted. Yeah. The end's now calling. <laughs>